Badu and I am back with another one. Yay! Keep in mind that these are general collective readings and I don't read for any one specific sign on this channel. Jesus Christ. <laughs> if this is your story or business, if this resonates, give it a thumbs up, like it if you like it, and subscribe if you like my vibe. If this is your story, your business, if this resonates, be honest with yourself. Plug yourself into the reading where you deserve to be. Smack it up, flip it, rub it down, hit the reverse on it. Do whatever you have to do, but don't force it. Only take what resonates with you, your life, your story, and leave the rest behind. Welcome. Hey, if you're new, and welcome back if you have been here before. What? Okay. The way these cards was falling out of here was crazy, all right? Um, somebody's energy is really, really strong. So whatever this passion burning for you, one day, somewhere, another time, gamble, about to take a risk, right? Whoever the fuck this is, they're very serious, right? Like this is somebody who's not coming to play no games, be careful, y'all, okay? Because this could be somebody who damn near stressed you to death, okay? Um, I don't know if I told y'all, like, you just got to be careful with these people coming and running back into your life after you've been doing the work to heal yourself and release and, and get over and, and getting your mind and your body and things back healthy and back where you want them to be, back where they need to be, right? Because this person is coming towards you because they're not happy with the situation. They're not happy with the fact that y'all haven't seen each other in years. They're not happy that you didn't chase them down after they ran off with somebody else. They ain't happy that you blocked their ass and you ain't unblocked them yet or whatever it is, right? But you did what you needed to do to, to protect yourself, right? Dealing with my ex... You know, it was really, really, I didn't even realize how stressed out I was until I got away from the situation, until I took some pictures and stuff and I looked at them and I was like, fuck, you know, like I'm looking like a motherfucking skeleton out here, knees clacking together and shit. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that alarm going off? Danger. Okay. Warning. All right. Um, yeah, I had got so skinny, like I'm still really small from that experience, right? I'm still putting on healthy weight because that shit almost killed me. My hair was falling out in clumps, okay? And I had never been stressed out like that before, so I didn't understand why my hair was falling out and I didn't even realize I had gotten so thin. Um, I went from maybe like 140 to like 115, you know, 18, somewhere in there, pounds, right? Now I'm about somewhere, I fluctuate, I've always fluctuated though, so I'm really somewhere between like 128 and 134, like that's my zone right now, but, and I'm comfortable with that size, I know slowly and over time I'll continue to put on weight, I'll probably even out between 135 and 140, because that's, that's what size I'm supposed to be. <laughs> But yeah, for me, when, even though my hair was coming out in clumps the way it was, like, I mean, falling the fuck out to the point where when it was all said and done, I was damn near skin bald, like on my temples and on the sides of my hair. Um, but I noticed my daughter's hair started to fall out. And I guess, you know, that's some stress, some, I guess our body, the way it deals with stress, it's a genetic thing or something I'm supposing. Cause her, when, that's when I noticed like, hold the fuck up. You know, for me, sometimes we don't have the strength to get out of a situation for ourselves. We may not be loving ourselves enough, but we always gonna love our kids more than we love ourselves, right? So when I noticed that my daughter's hair was breaking off and coming out, and me crying and being sad or whatever it was, was affecting them. And yes, we try to hide. Yes, we try to go cry in our closets and shit, but your energy is off, right? Your energy is different and things like that. And your kids can feel that for those of y'all who have kids. And I didn't realize, cause I thought I was hiding it, <laughs> but I didn't realize I was 
stressing my kids out, right? Or he was stressing the kids out, you know, by hurting me and stressing me out, it was hurting him. So that's when it was done for me. So if this is something where you had to be done like that, where you had to get the fuck away because this person was trying to kill you, you know, you were stressing yourself to death and withering the fuck away and shit like that because of the pain and the turmoil and the chaos that this person was bringing into your life, don't nobody give a fuck about them wanting to come back around and having passion and desire for you, right? So some of y'all are going to have to stand on your shit. Some of y'all are really, really, really going to have to continue to give this person the cold shoulder, continue to give this person your ass to kiss, okay? Because they are, it's some sort of a risk, about to take a risk to see you. So I feel like this person is overstepping your boundaries. I feel like this person is not supposed to be taking this risk to come and see you or to call you or whatever it is that they're about to do. But they have this passion that's been ignited for you. You know, they want you. And when they were doing all that crazy ass shit to you, they felt like one day that they could come back around and fix it or they could come back around and be nice to you or fuck on you or whatever it was and smooth things over and everything would be okay. But I don't feel like you feel that way, right? So whoever this is, they're curious about you because you have, you're have you nowhere to be found. You didn't return. You didn't look back. You didn't go back because there would have been no reason for you to look back or go back. But they, uh, they're, they're curious about you. They're interested in knowing more about you and what you have going on. So the two cards I pulled out was overindulgence, doing something way too much with resurfacing, reappearing after a period of hiding. This person is, has been quiet. You went, they may have ghosted you or went quiet first or whatever, right? But really it may have been more of a, of a ghosting in, with the intent of trying to breadcrumb you and basically drag you around behind them like some dumb lost dog. Ooh, hold on y'all. Okay. Sorry about that, you guys. All right, I had a, a my doctor's office call. I'm so excited. Every if you've been on my other collective channel, then you know I talk a lot about getting my boobs done. All right, because I breastfed. Okay, breastfed both of them. Breastfed them for a year. They tired. Okay. <laughs> They tired, they look tired, all right? And I'm like, look, fuck it. You know, put it all back to where it was before I had them, all right? So, <laughs> so I had to take that call because it ain't no games being played. I'm so fucking excited. I'm lit, 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 okay? So, yeah, I had to take that call. But, um, yeah, let's get back into it. Where was I at? So this person was breadcrumbing you with the intent of you chasing around behind them overindulgence, doing something way too much. And that's why, that's kind of where I give those examples, right? I'm always use myself as an example because I don't give a damn, right? It is what it is, it happened, we went through it, I came out the other side, it's nothing, right? But if this person had you fucked up like that, if, they, if you were sick or losing weight or had put on a, a ton of weight or your hair falling out or, or whatever, it was because of this, whatever they were doing, they were doing it too much, right? If they were being disrespectful, it was constant. It was all day, every day, anytime you had to interact with them, they were yelling, they were screaming, they were hanging up in your face, they were calling you out of your name all day, every day, anytime you had to interact. Um, they may have been acting like every single thing you did was so, it was just so dramatic, it was so much, you were so annoying, they, you just get on their nerves, really treating you like they hated your fucking guts, right? And I feel like, it just, it was too much, right? They overdid it. They overdid the fact that they were counting on your unconditional love for them to outweigh their abuse. But it, it, that who the fuck, right? Like who in the fuck did they think you was? It did not. The, the abuse was too much. It, it, it killed the love, right? You found out and figured out that your love does have conditions. And someone overly abusing you, overly disrespecting you, overdoing every single thing that they're doing, you know, just hanging up in your face every single time they talk to you, cussing at you and screaming at the top of their lungs every fucking single time they talk to you to the degree where they're embarrassing themselves around the people that they're around because people don't understand why this person is yelling and screaming at the top of their lungs. Now, of course, they want to get off the phone and try to act like you're just so fucking horrible 
but really this person was looking stupid, right? Because it's like you have absolutely no type of self-control at all whatsoever, you know, due to the fact that they just could not contain themselves. But I feel like they just had gotten comfortable disrespecting you and mistreating you and abusing you. And they continue to do it and 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 do it. So now you're gone. Now you don't want to talk to them. You don't want to see them. You don't want to have nothing to do with this person. You don't want them close to you. Some of y'all are scared of this person because of who they actually turned out to be. It's scary, right? You pretended to be something for so long and then you show somebody a completely different energy for years and years. It's like, who the fuck were you to begin with? So some of y'all are scared of this person while they somewhere thinking you know, that they're giving you time and space to over, to get over what they did, the abuse, to get over the, the cussing out, the screaming, the hanging up in the face, the calling you out of your name, the, dra the lying, the manipulating, the cheating. This person thinks you're going to get over what they did to you with time. And so that's why they've been in this period of hiding, resurfacing, reappearing after, reappearing after a period of hiding. But I don't think that I don't think you're expecting to see, hear from, or have to deal with or interact with this person ever again because they ha are in hiding or they have gone into hiding or they did go into hiding whenever they did. But the, I'm telling you, all they were doing, excuse me, <clears throat> all they were doing was giving you time to forget about the things that they did as if, those aren't things that replay in your mind over and over again, right? All day, every day for a, for, for some of y'all for weeks or months or maybe even years. And now that you're, it's not replaying all over again and over again and over again in your head, you don't even give a fuck anymore, but you will never ever forget who this person showed you that they are, how they treated you, how they spoke to you, how they handled you, how they were dish. You will never forget, right? So they can hide for us. They need to stay in hiding. Because if they wait, if they think they're going to pop back up on some cool shit, they're going to have another motherfucker. What? Okay. Another thing coming. All right. <laughs> Pride. Ego, arrogance, stubborn love. So, strangely, maybe this person, quote unquote, loves you still. But how are you going to treat somebody that way that you, that you love? You know what I'm saying? That don't make no fucking sense to me at all whatsoever. Um, this person is full of pride. They're full of ego. They were in their pride and their ego is pathetic as it sounds. Treating you the way that they were treating you, causing you to lose weight, causing you to put on weight, causing your hair to fall out. That was making this person feel good about themselves. Tearing you down for no fucking reason because they're pussy as fuck and pathetic as fuck and fucking crazy as fuck was making this person feel good about themselves. So... They continue to stay in this prideful, egotistical, stubborn energy, thinking that it was getting them some sort of a win, thinking that they were hurting you, thinking you would never love yourself or be happy or, or enjoy life ever again. But really, the only thing you will never enjoy again is this person, right? Because they got you fucked the fuck up and you would never, right? Ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, never, ever entertain this person in a relationship setting ever the fuck again, period. <laughs> Yeah, solitary, withdrawn, lonesome, single. This person could be single for some of you guys. They could be resurfacing after a period of hiding. So maybe they were in another commitment or they were chasing somebody else down and it didn't work out for them. And now they're lonely, you know, because this person has codependency issues. So being single or being unattached to, to someone is very lonely for this person because they have issues, right? But for you, I feel like you've withdrawn from this person. You're single as well for a lot of you and you're enjoying being single where I feel that it's very heavy and, and bothersome for this person, right? Bothered, they're never satisfied. They either wanted to be outside, they wanted to be street meet or street cat, they wanted to chase down street meet or street cat, right? So now they out there chasing and getting this person. <laughs> I, I don't even get me bothered. When they were in a commitment, it was bothersome. It was boring. They hated it there. Now that they outside, they're bothered. They feel like they're being used for sex. They feel like they're being used for money. Nobody likes them. Nobody is falling in love with them. Don't nobody want to be with them forever and ever and ever. They getting used and abused. They getting smashed on and passed on, right? And this could be a man, right? 
And you may think, nah, this person is a slut. This person is a hoe. This person wanted to be outside, but they still want to feel love. They still want somebody to show them that they're important to them. They still want to be loved on, right? And be able to love on somebody. But don't nobody, ain't nobody sticking around long enough. Everybody's pretty much showing this person that they ain't shit. You're just good enough for a fuck. You're just good enough to be my trick. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and they don't like that. This could even be a woman who's out there cougaring, right? Out there chasing around after young men and throwing money at them and whatnot. But at the same time, this person wants one of these young men to choose her for something more than just her bag. But it's like, you're not, you ain't nothing to these men. You're nothing but something for them to, you know, hump and dump on and then throw a little money at, you know what I'm saying? Or, or grab a little money from you and go on about their day. So it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. This is somebody who thought that it was cool to be outside, right? This is a woman who thought it was cool to trick off on young men, right? Thinking I'm gonna control these men. Ain't nobody, I ain't never got the love I wanted. Fuck whatever y'all had going on, right? I ain't never got the love I wanted. I never got what I feel like I deserve. So I'm gonna just go out here and play with these little boys and dangle my money around in their face so they'll chase me. But this feminine is not getting chased. She's getting used for her money. She's getting used for sex. And then these men are running off to women that are their own age, falling in love. And now this feminine, it could be a, a, a older woman, right? Who's depressed and miserable and feeling lonely and single because she didn't want to be in the commitment or in the marriage or anything like that with you anymore if you're a guy watching. And now this, this person is curious about you in whatever the sense is. Because some of y'all are out there with y'all kids and this bitch then ran off with some young ass dude who pretty much was just using her for her money. And now they gone, right? And ran off, like I said, with somebody they own age and fell in love. And she's somewhere looking and feeling stupid, wondering how you and the kids are doing. Better than you, bitch, right? <laughs> so yeah, whoever this is, they bothered. They never satisfied. But they do have some sort of passion that's burning for you after they overdid it. After they overdid everything. Online drama, making issues public, pot of gold, selling you false dreams. I'm not sure if this is you guys, but I do. What I feel like is you guys may see if you have this person on social media or if you look this person up. That would be the only way that you're aware. Some of y'all are absolutely unaware that this online drama is unfolding right before everybody's eyes because you have this person blocked. You don't give a fuck about them or they old grandma or, you know, they young little bitch or whatever it is. You don't give a fuck, right? So you may not know that all this person's, you know, Kool-Aid is all out on the table. Everybody is all up in their tea because whoever they was fucking with is immature and childish and kind of trashy and ghetto and so they don't mind airing their own shit out all online you know for attention so somebody's putting they book their business out in them streets about how this masculine isn't who they really said that they are and how this masculine was selling them some sort of a false dream but i feel like you don't know shit about it because you're gone right you already know that this person sells false dreams you may not be the type of person to go and update your status. You know, do anybody want some clothes? Because I'm selling this motherfucker's shoes. Fuck him. You know, you ain't. You may not be that type. <laughs> you you would never get online and start, you know, airing yourself out and airing out all of your business. Because that's fucking weird and crazy when people do that kind of shit. They looking for attention. They want to comment back. They want people to ask what's going on. They want this. They want that. So there's somebody putting this person business out in the streets. And I feel like some of y'all may see it if you are if you look this person up regularly or every now and then or something like that. But others of y'all, you just not gonna know. But there is some sort of bullshit going on online in this person's life and in their energy, all right? <clears throat> Despair, mirror, memories. Yeah, so while somebody is talking shit about them online and putting all their shit out there, they're in despair. They're falling apart they're sinking they're hopeless mm, spirit said that if this some of this could be you if you're a reader mm, mm -hmm. spirit was saying okay if y'all are readers and you're telling your story or if you are guiding people to get away from a certain type of personality type narcissist and all that type of shit you may be the person who is 
putting this person's business out in the streets and because they sold you a false dream, they're not who they really are, have pretended to be. And this is causing this person to be sad because they know that you see them, right? You see them for who they really are. You, you are fully aware that this person was trying to breadcrumb you, trying to abuse you, trying to manipulate you. You're fully aware that they were enjoying doing this and they know that you know, they know that you gonna trust yourself and your intuition before you fucking trust anything they ever got to say. So they're in despair. They're kind of hopeless because they're curious about you. They have passion for you. They want you guys to come back together, right? With the mirror, reflection, shared feelings. So all of a sudden, this person is feeling how you once felt about them. But they know you don't feel like that about them anymore if you are out there putting, you know, putting people on, right? To, to what type of snakes are out there in the grass, right? <laughs> so... They're in despair. They're falling apart. They're sinking and they feel hopeless because they're losing faith. They don't believe that they can get you back. They don't believe that they can talk their way out of this, but they're going to do it anyways with that gamble energy. And I feel like it's because this person is a narcissist, right? They really don't care about your boundaries. They really don't care how happy you are. They really don't care to bring any type of light into your life because seeing this person again and this person trying to be with you again is not going to be an enjoyable experience for you it's going to be very very upsetting <laughs> so yeah but they're all in their head Ray right? reminiscing over the past they're dwelling on the past because the memories are sweet but they have turned the situation very bitter and very sour right it's tasting like fucking curdled nasty old spoiled ass milk in this motherfucker and this person knows that they brought that nasty spoiled milk energy into y'all situation with they glass half empty negative pessimistic ass right but you're the opposite glass is half full you're optimistic right so the memories are sweet but it's a bitter moment because those memories are long gone and that energy between the two of you that friendship or that love or that companionship or that whatever it was right it, that's dead they killed it and they know they killed it <clears throat> so i really don't believe that this person believes that they can get you back but i feel like their impulsive narcissistic compulsive type of nature is why they're going to take this risk to see you knowing damn well that that's not the you know ain't the right route right that's not the best direction that they should be going in not coming towards you but they're gonna do it anyway they're in despair they're in despair, yes, because they know that you see them, but I feel like they're also in despair because of the way life has played out for this person. Yeah, yeah, that distance is really killing this motherfucker. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. Here's curiosity again in a, from the other deck, okay? So we got curiosity out here twice. This person is very, very curious to know what you up to. You, you turned your back and they never fucking saw it coming. They never ever thought of you as having being able to have the strength to actually withdraw from them and leave their ass behind. And you maybe, it's because you couldn't, right? It's because for a time period, you never would have blocked this person. For a time period, you never would have cut this person out of your life completely. For a time period, like... This person damn near could do no wrong, right? You could have felt sorry for them. You could have been like, okay, you know, this person is just hurting. You know, they, they dealing with the shit, how they deal with it. It's not the right way, but you know, maybe they had come out of it. The fact that they were in that pride, that ego, that stubborn love, that arrogant energy is why they continue to do it, right? They just started to abuse your heart, your kindness, right? They started to take your kindness and use it against you. They started to see your kindness as a weakness, but you ain't weak, right? Just because you're kind, that don't mean you're not capable of moving on. That don't mean that you, you, you know, you, you a dummy or no shit. It just means that you have a heart. It means you're compassionate. It means you're kind. Something that this person is not and never will be. They're not nice. There's nothing about this motherfucker that's nice and they will never be nice. Mm-mm. Craving your physical touch, second chance, making a man's opportunity plan, influences, GPS. They trying to find you. This person is trying to find you. Like, and I don't even feel like you're nowhere to be found. For some of y'all, this person know where you live or they know where you work. Like they know exactly where you are. But 
they maybe would like to, they would rather bump into you out in public or something like that, rather than having to come towards you groveling and begging or whatever it is, because they prideful, right? They're egotistical, they're arrogant. So what I feel is that the divine, the angels, the universe, the their ancestors, whomever, whatever, I feel like this person is being humbled because there was a period where spirit came to this person and said humble your motherfucking self you know what i'm saying and this person could not receive that message the way that they needed to receive that message there's nothing humble about this person at all this person don't got shit right they're uh, they're stupid as fuck they don't they can't think of no nothing that makes any sense on their own everything about this person is wrong and dumb but they arrogant prideful, egotistical, nothing about there. They should be humble. They're not the sharpest fucking knife in the drawer, right? Like they're not the finest motherfucker in the world. They don't got the biggest thing thing. They don't have the wettest cat cat, right? They thing ain't meowing, all right? <laughs> it's like, <coughs> you got a smoker's cough in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like they not all that they think that they're cracked up to be. They don't got the best body. They don't got, they're, they're not, you know what I'm saying? And that don't mean that they ain't shit. It's just like, you need to humble your motherfucking self. It's better. It's a finer motherfucker. It's a motherfucker out there that really know how to fuck, that can really please me, right? That ain't a selfish fuck. That's someone who's going to give to me. It's somebody out there that's going to treat, look at me different and treat, right? So it's the arrogance and ego of thinking you couldn't do better than them when they ain't shit to begin with right you chose them because you chose them not because they're un not replaceable so i feel like spirit is humbling this motherfucker because they couldn't humble their damn self and spirit was like humble yourself motherfucker humble yourself young man but they could not so now spirit is like cool we we'll humble you since you don't know how to do it on your own and we're gonna pull the collective right out your life and sit them over here to the side while we tear your shit down okay <laughs> So now they want to pick it back up. Ew. Ride or die crew. They got some old nosy ass motherfuckers who need to mind their fucking business around them, encouraging them to take this risk. The, the reason this person is going to roll this dice in your direction, this gamble, they're going to take that risk to come and see you or to, to whatever it is. It's because of the people that are around them. They've been calling their mama and telling their mama, you know, whining and bitching and, and victimizing themselves, you know, to their mama or calling they, they sitting up around their friends, you know, playing dumb and, and going over these bittersweet memories. I remember when, I remember when, and back when, and these people are like, if you just apologize, right? With beauty, get the fuck out of here, right? Don't nobody want you. Not somebody beautiful as fuck, charming as fuck, graceful. Uh-uh, you live in a lap of luxury right now. You don't want this motherfucker around you. You're beautiful on the inside, right? Because your beauty on the outside don't matter if you're an ugly-ass bitch on the inside or an ugly-ass motherfucker, right? You're beautiful on the inside, and that is why your outsides look 10,000 times better than, than what they actually are. And I ain't saying you ugly. <laughs> You could be pretty as fuck. You could be handsome as fuck. But you're like extra bad. You're extra sexy. You are extra fine because you're fun. You're happy. You're jovial. You're loving, right? You're charming. You're you you the shit and on the inside. And so it reflects and it shows on the outside. And um, you could find your, you could look in the mirror and be like, I don't think I look good. I think I have a big nose or I think my lips are too thin or I think, you know, whatever, your hair could have fell out, you know, and you could be like, I don't I look like a plucked fucking chicken right now. That is not how other people see you. You people see you as beautiful as fuck because people can see your insides on the outside, your aura, your glow, your, your, <laughs> Your soul, it shines on the outside, right? So don't worry about the way you look. You may, you don't have to think you look good. It's your energy that people feel. And people are going to always find, you're going to always find that people are attracted to you. You could even feel like, I don't even look that good. You may not understand why people are attracted to you. Or you may feel like people are attracted to your body or something. No, it's your light. It's the inside of you that people are the most attracted to. Okay? Um... So yeah, this person got people around them that need to mind their fucking business, but these people don't know 
what this person did to you, not the severity of it, right? They may be lying or they may have heard or seen one little incident and they like, just apologize. Shut the fuck up and mind your goddamn business. You don't know all that this person that fucking did to me. You know what I'm saying, right? Don't be encouraging this fucking demonic devil ass snake manipulative cuckoo clock sociopath lunatic to be coming back around into my motherfucking life trying to knock me off my shit trying to disrupt my peace i think the fuck not <laughs> so they gonna try to come towards you with some sort of bullshit fake ass don't nobody give a fuck ass apology because it's people around them like you better apologize or you're gonna lose her forever you're gonna lose him forever been lost been gone been over it <laughs> But in order for them to try to, when they take this risk, and some of y'all, this person already gave you multiple fake apologies and they went in one ear and out the other because you don't give a fuck about this person or nothing they have to say. They're crazy. They're fake. Their apologies are fake. Whatever they say to you, it don't mean shit, right? Whatever they give you as a gift, you throw it the fuck away. Some of y'all, I, I have a Pandora bracelet in the top of my closet right now that I'm saving for my daughter when she turns 16, okay, or 15. I haven't decided because I ain't never gonna, I ain't wearing that motherfucker. You know, it ain't fucking mine. It wasn't for me. I don't want this shit. So I'm gonna just give it to my baby because it's, it's, it is nice. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it to my daughter because, hey, this is from your sperm donor. You know what I'm saying? Like what, period. So they want to pick it back up. It's been time and we already know that it's been time. This person is nervous as they should be. I ain't. <laughs> Some of y'all are nervous, as you should be, because you scared this person is going to come back around three, six, nine months, a year, two years, three years. You, you're scared and you're nervous that this person is going to try to take some sort of a risk to see you or speak to you. And that is the last motherfucking thing you want. You don't want this person in your life anymore. They're garbage. They're useless. They're mean, they're evil, they're vindictive, they're crazy. We already talked about this person's ego and their pride that literally makes no sense. How are you prideful and you're, you're homeless? How are you prideful and you can't make ends meet? How are you prideful and you're being used for sex and money? Where is the ego coming in at? Where, right? Don't nobody want you but me. And I don't want your bitch ass no more. Well, how are you full of pride and ego? Oh, they man, maybe they thought somebody wanted them out there in them streets, but all that person ended up wanting was some sex and some money. Get the fuck out of here. Thanks for the bag. Thanks for the D. Thanks for the P, right? So they nervous because it has been time. And they don't know what type of energy you're, you're in, you know, coming back around because they know that you were in this fuck you, fuck off energy when they left. But they feeling like, okay, it's been six months, three, six, nine months, one, two, three years. How is the collective now, right? Are they still angry? Are they still, you know, are they holding a grudge? Are they going to try to pay me back? But they, they can't live without you. It's kind of what it feels like, sadly. So they did all this feeling like knowing that they couldn't live without you. But they were enjoying themselves. They were getting a kick out of what they were doing to you. Weird energy. Hmm, pick up from how things were left. Things weren't left good. So is that really what we want to see? You know what I'm saying? You want to pick it back up? Things were left crazy as fuck. This person may try to give you guys some sort of a gift or start sending shit to your house um, to try to get you to soften up or forgive them for literally abusing you <laughs> so that they can make some sort of a return. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The distance is real. The barriers are very severe. They're very serious, okay? The separation is real. The space is very real. The time is real, right? The cycle is over in your mind, but it's not over because this person won't leave you the fuck alone. They not finding a connection and a bond like you guys had, right? glowing lights up whenever near you or someone mentions you so they ain't been near you so i would have to imagine whoever these nosy ass friends are they may ask oh hey have you heard from flifty flip right have you heard from the collective have you seen the collective have you this the collective and they make it really excited and really giddy like no but you know i sent a gift or no but you know i think i'm a call or you know whatever whatever but that that's just uh, that i don't feel like that's what this is all going on in this person's mind and in this person's life and in this person's energy. You somewhere scared 
shaking in your panties, <laughs> shaking in your boxers every time you think about, please, Lord, you know, praying, don't let this person come back to my home. Don't let this person ever show up outside my house. Don't let this person ever call me from no number. Don't let this motherfucker ever send me no eat. Like, please don't let this person ever come back around to me again. Please give them the strength to take their bitch ass on somewhere. Right? But no. No. But why? I mean, if you were that important, why would this person treat you in a way that you now are afraid of them? You now see this person as an enemy and a nemesis of yours right so it's just it's weird with established i'm really getting triumph and security from this energy this person wants they with security i'm getting like they want the security of of like knowing that you're theirs right or knowing that they can still have you or that that they still possess you or that they can still come back to you whenever they want or something like that that would feel like a victory for this person some of y'all if y'all do have kids or have some sort of a family set up or a scenario they feel maybe like that's going to help them get some sort of an easier win with you but i don't think so i think you know you didn't figure out how to do it by yourself or you have been doing it by yourself and you really don't see the point in you know and fucking with them again we have apprehensive with harmony too what is this apprehensive yeah that's you though you're guarded you're moving very cautiously and you're very much afraid of this person a lot of y'all are and a lot of y'all are or it's just you're afraid of them as a as an abusive narcissistic fucking crazy ass demon or you're afraid of them um coming back around into your life you're just afraid that you, you're you not going to ever get away from this fucking sociopath. But I feel like they're also afraid because they now want harmony, peace, balance, friendship. But there's tension. <laughs> there's tension because of them. They're elusive. They became elusive. They were dishonest. They were tricky. They were manipulative. They were a liar. Now there's tension. There's turbulence. There were mad arguments, right? arguments on top of arguments on top of arguments on top of arguments until the point that you guys became stressed and like i said in the very beginning some of y'all lost a lot of weight some of y'all put a lot of weight on some of y'all your hair fell out some of y'all it started to affect your children your children were losing weight or your kids hair started falling out you know or something you would be motherfucking god damned this person tried to kill you and your kids for some of y'all this person tried to destroy your whole entire existence and your whole entire being because they too pussy to move the fuck on. You know what I'm saying? To let it be done. To let it be what the fuck it is. Mm. You got to be a horrible, selfish, you know, evil ass motherfucker to try to come back towards somebody that you treated like this. You got to be crazy and you got to be an evil ass son of a bitch. And I feel like this person is look not enough with engagement ring this person may have ran off and committed to someone else or even proposed to somebody with some fucking gemstone ass moissanite you know fucking uh what's them candy them little machines where the rings come out and stuff and them little plastic they didn't went to somebody with some old plastic ass bullshit and jumped to some sort of commitment or engagement but it's not what they thought that it was gonna be and that's for some of y'all they're frustrated in that relationship. They feel insecure because that they can tell that that person don't like them or love them or value them. They're starting to feel like they're being used for sex and or money because somebody is only coming around when they want money. Somebody's only coming around to this person in the middle of the night. They fucking in the car and then baby is driving the fuck off back to her real man's house. And this person is starting to feel sick about it. They feel insecure due to the way that this other person is treating them. They're upset that they sabotaged the situation with you for this. That may have been why they were in their ego, because they thought they had something else lined up or somebody better than you. And now this person is insecure. They're full of jealousy. I feel like this person, I heard jealous rage. So I feel like this person is in some sort of a jealous rage when it comes to this third party. And I feel like they're raging out the way that they are because they chose this person over you and this person is clowning the fuck out of them. 
embarrassing the fuck out of them and dragging their ass through the fucking mud. This was some sort of a temptress, a Jezebel, a whore. This was a seductress, right? This was a third party interference. This was temptation. This masculine should have said, bitch, get your ugly dog face ass out of here. Do get your ugly dog face ass out of here or whatever it was. But they got in their ego and thought they were something special because some whore figured out how to manipulate them. Oh, this weak ass motherfucker just want their ego boosted. Cool. Uh, they just want sex all the time and they give me all their money. Cool. Right. So the person started giving them sex all the time and taking all their money gassing them up you so fine you so sexy Ooh, ah, ah, i ain't never had it like this before you know and they just got so full of they self that they destroyed their whole fucking life and got so full of they self that they thought they really was doing it for this person over here who was playing the fuck out of this masculine so yes they're in a jealous rage because you're a real catch right you're a true empress and you're free you're you're ready you're free and available for anybody to come and pick up and treat better than this motherfucker ever did that's why they trying to come towards you with apologies and gifts and all these types of things because they know anybody in the world who come after them will be better than them anybody in the world who come after them will treat you better than they treated you anybody in the world who come after them will give more to you than this person ever could or was willing to so they're gonna try to come towards you and make up for lost time or make up for the time that they had you and never ever never poured a drop into you because they're realizing that this thing over here doesn't compare to what y'all used to have before they start before they turned it into what they turned it to because this person literally rewrote history right y'all situation was supposed to go down one path but this person chose a karmic and they chose a karmic path and they chose a karmic lifestyle so that that was a rewriting of y'all shit right boop you went this way they went that way you can't turn around and go this way you're already on this road right how the fuck are you gonna jump from this road to this road you way down this road and this person is way down this road right you are the collective but they're going to try to jump from the karmic path that they chose over to divinity where you are as if that shit is going to work out for them. As if that's how that works. But it's not. This is an ending. It brought a new beginning for them with whoever this, you know, trollop is over here that they was fucking with. But it's also brought a new beginning for you because you've grown, you've changed, you've liberated yourself, you're free, and you've gone through a transition. So you'll never fuck with this person or see them the same again, which is why not today is out here. You're not dealing with this person. You're avoiding this person like the bubonic motherfucking plague. Your boundaries are up. And a lot of y'all are hanging on to the ill feelings that you have for this person so that you'll never open your heart up to them again. You're healing from the heartbreak because the way that this person treated you was extremely heartbreaking. Um, you're liberating yourself, right? But with, with freedom from toxic relationship, right? So you've liberated yourself because this relationship, although it may not have started off as toxic, it, it ended in toxicity. It ended in an extremely toxic it, uh, energy. So you're healing, it's over. You're in a new beginning all on your own. A lot of y'all are so fucking happy. Ooh, the tower. This person is going through some sort of a tower moment. They could be a Scorpio or the third party could be a Scorpio for some of y'all. But yeah, see, the ending brought a new beginning, death. There was a new beginning with this seductress person and they tried to go and marry y'all. This, this person wanted to turn a whore into a housewife or they have turned a whore into a quote unquote housewife because this person don't sit down for nothing or nobody, not even them. And now that you're in this new beginning, you're in this high priestess energy, you're nowhere to be found. You're mysterious. You don't, you're not fucking with them. Not today with the queen of swords, not fucking with them, right? <laughs> like it just is what the fuck it is. This is nice. It's nice for you guys. It's, it's not nice for this person. And it really, the part that's not nice for y'all is that this person is going to try to apologize and, and that they got, like, literally there's people, which is upsetting as fuck for me, right? There's literally people um, encouraging this person to come towards you. And that's not right. You know what I'm saying? People should be minding their own motherfucking business. This person shouldn't be talking about you. Your name shouldn't be in their mouth. 
what y'all used to do in the past shouldn't be in their mouth. What you have going on in your own fucking life without this motherfucker shouldn't be in their fucking mouth. You should never, ever be mentioned as far as this person is concerned. But obviously, they mentioning you a little bit too much, glowing and lighting up and shit if anybody asks them about you. And because of the way they're reacting, they got people thinking that it's okay for them to tell this masculine to come and disrupt your peace. So, you know what I'm saying? It's not right, but they don't, you know, I don't know. These these, per these people are selfish. I know that. <laughs> the Hierophant, you learned your lessons and you've gone through your ascension. Ten of Cups, you're happy. Yeah, y'all have happiness. Y'all learned y'all lessons. Y'all went through y'all ascension. You have happiness in your home. Some of y'all do have children and everybody is back to the energy and the headspace that you should be in, a very healthy energy, a very healthy headspace. And it's because you had to completely get rid of this person out of your life. So that's, and they know what they were doing to you and to your kids, whether they're their kids with you or your kids on your own. So they should really be leaving you alone. This type of shit to me is so upsetting, right? You gotta have some motherfucking nuts on your ass to try to come in and treat somebody who you try to destroy, right? To try to come back and act like y'all buddy buddies and friends and everything's gonna be all right. Who the fuck do you think you are? Who, right? Who the fuck? The king of swords with the queen of swords. Some of y'all are divorced, whether this motherfucker know it or not, right? They could be trying to come toward you and act like, let's work on the marriage. Bitch, what marriage? Oh shit, I forgot. Yeah, I told the courts and them that I didn't know where you was and shit. Yeah, they like posted it in the paper, but like nobody reads the paper anymore. So you missed it. And then because you didn't respond in 30 days, they like went on ahead and let me get that divorce though. Like what marriage? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This motherfucker don't even know. We're divorced. We're the king and queen of arts. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. You thought it was a pinnacle thing going on over here. It's not. We've been done. We've been divorced. The fuck you mean, right? <laughs> Uh, sometimes people don't know who they fucking with and who they playing with because you never know how somebody's going to handle, you know, a situation when it's all said and done. Just because this pussy want to come back around and keep playing and shit, that don't mean you do. Queen of Cups, okay? You want to love on yourself, healing heart. A lot of y'all are back in a very familiar energy. You could be a Pisces or a Scorpio, your damn self, okay? There's also Taurus energy out here, but... You're in this Queen of Cups energy of loving yourself first and, and nurturing and coddling your kids and the people around you. You're in a very, very positive energy, which is why you're in hiding, which is why you're in this mysterious, you know, the energy is sexy, though. I'm not going to lie. And it may be sexy to this person. It may be sexy to many people. But this energy is a sexy energy, the high priestess, because people like to wonder, right? And they like to wonder what you're doing. They like to wonder where you at. They like to fantasize and imagine what you could be doing or what, what could happen if y'all came together and shit. So I actually feel like you going into hiding, although you did this to remove this person from your life, it may have actually really captured this person's attention. Not initially because they were too busy trying to force this engagement to work or force this living situation to work or force this rushed commitment to be something more than just sex and, and and a money exchange right they they engage to or living with or married to a prostitute you know but they trying to force it to be a real relationship and a real higher level of commitment a real situation real happiness but that ain't what it is and that ain't never what it was going to be right so then they they start to put their attention back on you well where where you been at what you doing the curiosity right so Hiding from this person is actually calling this person into you, but unintentionally. I feel it's extremely unintentional, right? For a lot of y'all. Two of Wands, you left this shit because you left this behind and chose to go down a different path. You know, you got over it, you know? You, you got over it, you got over them, you got over the pain, you got over the disrespect, you got over the abuse. You got over the neglect. You got over it all, right? And you decided, I fuck it. I'm going to leave it behind. I'm going to leave these sleepless nights or whatever behind and move down a different path. But I feel like you doing that, now this person is in this Nine of Swords energy, Five of Swords. 
because they know they know that you have walked away from them forever and they know that that they treated you in this aggressive abusive you know manner they know that they sabotaged the situation between the two of you because of their lack of communication skills and you walked out because they know that they had you in this nine of swords and they were trying to keep you in this energy intentionally not because they wanted to come back to you later because they had made it up in their mind 150 percent that the whore was the person for them they were doing this literally to abuse you literally to sabotage you and your life who does that you got what you want you happy you in love you got everything you ever wanted but you sticking around somebody else's life to try to hurt them and abuse them and sabotage their growth that's why this person ended up in the that's why they are where they are because now they're in the nine of swords how can i fix this i i tried to sabotage this person and they know it because this is a high priestess you know what the fuck you know okay your third eye is cracked can't nobody tell you shit other than what you already know you can't tell me shit i know what i know so they know you know okay they know you know that they were trying to sabotage you they know that you know that they were they were doing this because they had this nasty ass whore you know in their life they all of it right and you a lot of y'all kept saying leave me the fuck alone and go be with your ugly ass bitch like leave me alone i don't want you i ain't competing i ain't chasing i ain't jealous go be with your ugly ass dog but they just wouldn't they wanted to destroy your mind and your life they wanted to leave you with nothing and crazy and now they want to come back how motherfucking nuts can you be oh I forgot. It's nosy ass motherfuckers around this person. Tell me, yeah, you call the collective. Yeah, you should definitely send that to their house. Send them a couple things actually, and then give them a call, right? Because they didn't convince people that you want them. They didn't convince people that you was waiting on them or chasing them or competing for them. They didn't convince people that they left you, right? So they got people thinking that this is the right move. And it just ooh, grinds my fucking gears. It makes me upset. It does. Because I feel like this motherfucker no good and goddamn me well. They know, okay, that it ain't what the fuck it is. Queen of Cups with the Lovers and the Seven of Pentacles. As you guys heal, as you release this, or after, some of y'all have already healed and released it, and you're already in this energy of um, starting a new foundation with someone else. Could be a Gemini, or it's just somebody that you have a very, very intense, very strong soul tie with. And you're thinking that y'all are in some sort of a Two of Cups, or moving towards a Two of Cups, Ace of Cups. But really, with the lover's energy, you got a snake on the outside plotting on you. Still. Still plotting on your ass. Like, they haven't fucking done enough. Like, they have not done enough. But that's how narcissists are. They never do enough. They don't care about what they did to you. They don't care about how they treated you. They don't care about how you view them and how you're fucking scared of them and shit. They gonna come back towards you anyway. basically trying to come between you and your new person because their shit didn't work out because they goofy ass little bitch ain't shit you know what i'm saying like it's crazy so yeah if you don't have it yet y'all have a beautiful you know lover situation coming towards you somebody that you're gonna have a soul tie with something that's gonna be very very passionate and very very intense okay it's it's gonna be a foundation that is starting or that has started between you and this person I feel like some of y'all already have this person or you already know this person. You've already dealt with, or you've already dealt with them and y'all are going to come back together or something. But this is somebody that if you know them, that you would feel like this is your twin or you had a very uh, intense connection. It could have been sexual with the lovers with this person in the past. And so... Maybe it'll move past sex and y'all will actually be able to, you know, have some sort of foundation between the two of y'all. Whoa, Queen of Cups in the reverse. Oh well, yeah, whoever the lover, if it is a Pisces or a Scorpio uh, or a Cancer, this is someone who emotionally manipulated this masculine into ending things with you and starting things with them. And... 
I feel like this, once they got into it, once they had the rebirth, once they committed or moved in together or proposed, they really realized how emotionally unstable this third party truly is. Eight of Cups. Two of Pentacles with the Eight of Cups. I thought this was them broke as fuck and trying to detach emotionally from this third party. Or by the time they come towards you, they don't have a lick of feelings for this third party anymore. But I do feel that they're still attached to one another because I feel like they both have codependency issues. Whoever this third party is, they were they had become codependent on this masculine's um, energy. This masculine was giving this person an ego boost. They were boosting each other up, but also tearing each other down at the exact same time, right? Because this person destroyed this masculine's life with their emotional, I feel like they were overly emotional, crying, begging, please, and I love you, and you're so amazing, and your dick is so good, and I ain't never, and she don't deserve you, and all this kind of stuff, and they were building this masculine up, but the fact that this masculine left their whole entire situation for this person, built this person up, and led this person to believe that they were special, or they were better than you, or something like that, but this person is not sound in the mind right just because they were gassing each other up and blowing smoke up each other ass and talking nice to each other that don't mean this person is stable minded that don't mean this person is mature that don't mean this person is capable of being in a why to ask yourself why this bitch was single to begin with right but people don't think that kind of shit they thinking oh the right man ain't came along to love this person the way they know this motherfucker is crazy as fuck with this queen of cups in the reverse this person is absolutely fucking bananas banaka banunu okay mm, mm, mm. crazy i tell you five of cups mm, some y'all are the some y'all have regrets which we know but which is something that you're gonna overcome you're going to grow out of be feeling regret for fucking with this masculine. But I also feel like this masculine has regrets because now you're in this period of hiding. Yeah, Ten of Wands, the devil. Yes, them. They burden, they're obsessing because you you standing in your power, strength, right? You, the strength energy, um, you're standing in your power. You're standing on bend, okay? Whatever you decided you were going to do or however the fuck you decided, if you said, fuck it, I ain't never unblocking this motherfucker again or fuck it, I ain't never talking to this person again in my life or whatever it was, you're standing on it. And they're extremely burdened with this other person. They're extremely burdened with the, the life and the direction and the decisions that they've made and chose. They have regrets. They feel guilty, possibly even. I doubt it, but they could feel guilty. But that's just, that's temporary, right? Those are temporary feelings. They ain't gonna continue feeling guilty. They feel guilty. Um, I feel like because they want you back or whatever. We talked about you guys being in this nine of swords because of this five of swords that they were throwing at you. So here's not today with the Queen of Swords and the Five of Swords. Mm. Mm. So you're standing on whatever decision you made or you're standing on the fact that you're done, you've cut them off, you secretly divorced them or whatever it is, your boundaries, you're standing on those, you're using emotional intelligence, right? You're, you're in an intellectual energy, you are removed from the cup energy when it comes to this person, this person only, right? You can love again, you can move it, you can go out there and find somebody else and give your complete all and have intimate moments and rub each other's backs and give each other baths and, and candles and sex and lingerie. You can still do all of that. You just never do it for this person again. They'll never get your heart again. They'll never get your kindness again, right? Yeah, they were trying to destroy you and break you, but all they were successful at was destroying the way you see them, the way you feel about them, the way you view them, and they broke y'all connection. But they ain't break shit about you. They actually helped build you up. They actually gave you some strength that you didn't know was, was in you, right? They allowed you to see some things about yourself that you may not have believed in the past, right? Like, damn, I'm, I'm smart. Damn, I'm tough. You know, damn, I'm this. Damn, I'm that. You know, damn, I can do, I can take care of my, sh my whole fucking family by my goddamn self. They actually built you up when they were trying to tear you down. <laughs> ah, it's 
funny, but <laughs> but it is what it is, okay? Because with the four of wands, now you out celebrating, partying, having a great time. But when it comes to them, you will be damned. You see them as an abuser. You see this person as the five of swords. You see them as an as abusive, as aggressive, as violent. And they walked out on you. Mm-hmm. So you're like, you walked away, so stay away. I'm happy, I'm celebrating, I'm partying. You haven't, you've ascended. Y'all are y'all are in a really, really, really good, really positive energy in your own life and in your own energy, even in your mind's mental space, right? It's just like a trigger hearing this person's name or seeing this person's face or thinking about this person taking some sort of risk to come see you. That's when... <clears throat> any type of it, that's when anything may become a problem for you but on a day-to-day -day, four of wands celebratory energy you're actually possibly feeling like you got some sort of a win when this yeah the wheel of fortune you feel like you got a win you feel like uh luck is on your side you know whatever you've been doing or working on or whatever it's working out very well for you yeah ace of swords you feel luck is on your side because you had this epiphany or this realization and you did what you needed to do you're being obedient right the divine is like cool we gonna bless you because you do you going in the direction you're supposed to be going in you were not supposed to stay bound to this person they are the devil they're in devil energy which is why they are that's why they chose a karmic and why they're in a karmic cycle and why they're going down a karmic route because they are in this energy right you they had a choice and they chose bondage they told chose trauma they chose toxicity they chose abuse they chose aggression they chose to sabotage right they chose all these horrible things and that's they let the divine know this is what i want i want abuse i want drama i want sabotage i want this other bitch to walk out on me or you know what i'm saying they they chose devil right i want to be cheated on and i want to cheat that this is what they wanted but now that they got it, it's burdens, it's heavy. And they thought that this was fun. They, the, the devil energy, the devil lifestyle looked fun to this person from the outside because they wasn't in the devil energy yet. Not when they were ever bound or connected to you and it was boring. It wasn't fun, right? But they were watching people with four or five bitches. They were watching hoes crying and chasing and begging. But they don't, they didn't, they don't, they never saw the heavy part. People don't tell that part. People don't be like, man, I don't get no sleep at night because I ain't seen my, my, my first son in 10 years. They're just like, you know, yeah, who, 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 I got four bitches. 17 girls came and, and I got 17 hoes. I gave them my number last night. You know, that's what they saw and they were obsessing over it. I want that lifestyle. This hoe, right? She a stupid bitch. I can cheat on her. I can mistreat her. I can deceive her or him. I want that person because they just going to sit still and let me do what they want. They emotionally unstable. This person was playing this masculine just like they thought they were playing this feminine. They thinking this person is going to be like you and sit at the house and be a good girl and provide and, and do dishes and have sex and, and run bath waters and clean up. No, this motherfucker is on the, on TikTok. They running out with their friends. They partying. They drinking. They at the house crying and whining and bitching about every. It ain't get shit that they thought they was going to get. But it looked fun from the outside. Now they're in the devil energy and it is it's heavy. It's burdensome. Like I said, did nobody tell them how worrisome it really is? to be in this lifestyle that they wanted so bad. They prayed for this lifestyle, but they wasn't praying to God. And whoever they was praying to, their prayers were answered. You sure it's what you want? Are you sure? You right there trying to get them to take heed. Remember that time we seen that angel, right? Remember that time we was out at four in the morning and that random man popped up in that trench coat and looked you right in your eyes and said, humble yourself, young man, and we was laughing. Because you wasn't the fucking sick son of a bitch that you are now. And then we turned around and he was completely gone, disappeared. Because that really happened to me and, and, a, and a motherfucker I know. It was 4 o'clock in the morning, y'all. And I really did say, do you remember that? At the time, we thought it was funny and weird and crazy. We even was like, ooh, maybe that was an angel. I wasn't spiritual. I hadn't gone through no awakenings. I hadn't, I didn't, I was not where I am today. Neither one of us were. But God know what's coming, Right? 
So God knew to come down and say what, the, what was said the day that it was said. And we was like, that was weird in the motherfucker. Where did he go? Who wears trench coats? It was like a 90s beige trench coat, right? Black man just popped up out of no fucking where. I feel like angels show up to you in a way where you'd be comfortable, right? Black man pops up middle of the night. And now, mind you, we walking down a street. It's a dead end. We walking down towards the street that's going sideways, right? So we kind of, ain't nothing behind us. We're looking straight ahead. There's no one on the street. Nothing there. No one there. We get to the end of the street that we was walking down. We turn. Somebody's behind us like, hey, excuse me. Y'all got some money? We turn around like we're right up on us too where we would have seen this person if they were fucking there. We like, what the fuck? Where did this motherfucker come from? Because of the situation, I didn't have no money because I definitely would have gave him some. <laughs> but we was like, nah, man, you know, sorry, we don't have anything. And he was like, that's okay. He wasn't sad, he wasn't dirty or nothing. He was like, that's okay. And he was like, well, you know, y'all have a good night. And he said, young man, to the person I was with. And the person was like, yeah, what's up? And he was like, humble yourself. And we both looked at each other or no, like he, I was looking like what? And then he looked at me and I was like, I don't know. And the angel, cause to this day, I'm like, I ain't finna fucking front like it wasn't what it was. The angel said it again, humble yourself, young man. And we was like, what the hell? I was actually leaving him. This was right, this was, I was leaving him the next day. We both knew I was leaving him and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like he knew my people was on the way to come and get us and shit. And it, it was right at the, right when this shit was about to turn to what it turned to. But on that day, we were like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I'm saying? And yeah, he was, he humble your motherfucking self, stupid ass motherfucker, cause you finna ruin your motherfucking life. But that moment, this that person don't believe in God. That person don't believe in shit. They have no faith at all whatsoever. They don't even believe in themselves. So yeah, that it just went. It, it didn't sink in. And even after all the shit started to hit the fan and the arrogance and the ego and the abuse and the pride, I was still like, I am not crying for me and my kids, motherfucker. I'm crying for you. An angel came to you and said, humble yourself. This you are. This is not who you're supposed to be. This is not the path you're supposed to be taking. You're not supposed to be going towards the devil. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to humble yourself because what happened to you happened to you because of what you didn't do in the relationship. But you're trying to take it out on me. You need to humble yourself. This motherfucker would not take heed. Would not take heed. Would not take heed. Right. So it could be some shit to where it's just like it is what it is. Some people really are divine. Some people really are touched, right? And some people really were intended to go certain ways and on certain paths and become certain energies. I did I did the work. I let go of the shit that I wasn't supposed to have around me and I went the way I was supposed to. This motherfucker didn't. And now we're done, right? And I don't give a shit what, I don't care God himself could come sit down in front of me and talk to me and I'm gonna have to tell, keep it a band with my friend, right? And be like, I cannot, I am sorry, okay? <laughs> like that's done. But there was a time where I still had hope and faith that, you know, that moment actually would have sunk in and meant something to this empty ass motherfucker. But I knew at the same time it never would, right? Cause that would take humility. That would take for you to be humble. And this motherfucker ain't got a drop of humbleness in, in him. And so spirit was basically kept telling me to mind my fucking business and get the fuck out of the way because they finna humble his bitch ass. But I didn't want to see it. It's like, why? You know, like I'm trying to save him. I don't want him to have to go through nothing weird. I don't want that cycle for this motherfucker. Not even like I don't not even if we ain't together. I just don't want this cycle for you, my friend. You know what I'm saying? But that was the site. That's that's. That's where we ended up because he wouldn't take heed. He kept telling me, you know, you know, to leave him alone. Don't tell him none of the shit I know. Let him do his own thing. Let him make his own decisions and shit. And I, so I did. I was like, you right. But I told him a billion times, though, don't you ever come back around to me and my kids because we going on a different path and in a different direction. And by the time you figure it out, you are going to be less than nothing because you're nothing now, right? You gonna be less than nothing. Your mind gonna be even more fucked off than it already is. You gonna have even more trauma than you already do. 
you're going to hate yourself and be more insecure than you. And I can't fuck with you after that. Come on. You know, so we ended up where we at, right? Okay, so let's go. Yeah, the High Priestess, the Three of Wands, the Eight of Cups. Right? Intuitive than a motherfucker, knowing exactly what the fuck you know and going down a different path. Knowing that your ships, some of y'all know, and you know your ships are coming in. But you know you had to go ahead and do, be obedient. You know, some of y'all are really out there trying to get somebody to go the right way or see things. Fuck them. That ain't your job. And you're getting beat down and you losing money or you losing hair or losing your mind because you care about this person's well-being and you don't want to see them crash and burn. You don't want to see what life has for them. That's why I say block people. I don't block people out of spite or out of, I block you because I don't want to see, right? I don't want to see what's coming to you. I don't want to see the online drama. I don't want to see some bitch clowning you online. I don't want to see that shit that ain't fun or cute to me you know what i'm saying so some of y'all need to block this person or whatever just because it's not gonna be fun right it, and i'm not i'm talking to like the divine right the divine feminines it's not gonna be fun to see what really goes down in this person's life it ain't gonna be fun to watch somebody you used to know become a strung out cokehead you know what i'm saying it ain't gonna be fun to watch somebody you used to love become a, a fucking pissy ass alcoholic drunk you know what i'm saying so block them because you ain't gonna really want to see what's coming to this motherfucker because it's nothing pretty and it ain't nothing good some of y'all already see that this person is drinking too much doing drugs you already see where they headed go ahead and block them because when it all is said and done you're gonna wish you didn't see what you seen all right you know, and I ain't talking about no bitter, resentful, spiteful, ah, ha, 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 because laughing is catching. You laugh at a motherfucker and you look up and you a coked out drunk. You know what I'm saying? Five years from now. So don't be laughing at people because it's not funny, right? We joke and we play. I'm going to make the readings fun because this is my job, okay? <laughs> but it's not funny right and you should not laugh at people when they get karma and stuff like that because laughing is catching you get to cracking up too hard and getting too happy and excited about something bad that happened to somebody you know and you look up and you in that predicament you laughing because somebody was homeless now you look up and your motherfucking ass you know ain't got that house you was too busy telling everybody to get the fuck out of every other week you know what i'm saying i, I knew you was homeless ha, 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 ha. now you're homeless you know what I'm saying? You never motherfucking saw the day coming that your bitch ass would be homeless either, huh? You know what I mean? So you have to be careful laughing at people because laughing is catching, all right? Yeah, but for those of y'all who know your ships are coming in, Ace of Wands, you're very, very passionate about your new start and you're very, very serious about something that you're passionate about. <laughs> you're passionate about the new start, but you're doing something that you're passionate about in your new start and you're very serious about it ain't nothing finna take you away from it ain't nobody finna distract you knock you off your square you, you know nothing stop the flow of your shit none of that shit is gonna happen for you okay spirit if you of the divine spirit always gonna drop gems for you right i told y'all i did not i was not in the mood but spirit was like you're gonna make this channel right you're gonna do this you're gonna do that then you're going to do this and you're going to do that, right? I know exactly what's coming and what I'm going to be doing next. And I, you know what I mean? So if you, when you know, you motherfucking know, right? A bitch can try to stop your flow and your hustle all day. They can prey on your downfall all day. They can send you evil eye energy all day. If it's meant for you, can't nobody fucking take it. It's seriously, right? Because the divine going to make sure you good. They going to drop a gem on you and say, do this, right? Do that. Some of y'all spirit, you some of y'all feeling the urge to make a deck. You like, I don't know how to do that. But spirit knows you, you finna make two hundred thousand dollars off that deck. You know what I'm saying? So if you feeling a nudge or you I I, I saw an angel number six one six. It was about goals. It was about having these high goals or high expectations for yourself but also putting in the due diligence, doing the work, right? You can set the goals, you can manifest, you can daydream, you can imagine. But if you ain't hustling your motherfucking ass off, you ain't going to get whatever you feel is coming to you, right? Just because it's coming to you, that don't mean you, gotta you, you don't have to hustle for it. 
So, yeah, Ace of Wands, Six of Wands, Queen of Pentacles, okay? I shit you not, all right? Whatever the fuck y'all passionate about, whatever you know is going to be a victory, you know you're going to be the top of the line, you know that everybody's learning from you because you're the best, you know, you know that you're, you're really giving tea that other people don't even see, hear, smell, feel, because they're not real with it, you know what I'm They learning from you and shit. They trying to do what you do and be who you are. You're winning. You're, you're, you are victorious, right? Some of y'all are the shit. Some of y'all are teaching motherfuckers who done been in the game, all right? Right? Because you real with it, right? <laughs> you're chosen for real. You're divine for real. Your messages come to you days, hours, weeks, and months before you sit down. You feel me? So... And it's, you're going to be blessed by the divine for doing what you're doing. So that's why you don't got to worry about who don't like you, who ain't giving you this, who ain't giving you that. Some of y'all like, damn, you know, whatever, whatever it is, right? People out here hating on me, stealing from me, but don't want to give me my flowers. Don't worry about that. It's not for them to give you your flowers. The divine will give you your flowers. Your blessings are coming or they're very much here already by way of spirit. You're blessed and highly favored. Can't no bitch ever knock you off your square. Not, not no raggedy ass copycat ass hoe. You know what I'm saying? Like, bitch, please. <laughs> right? So you're good. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. You, but I, I just feel like all of this is going to come after you release your feelings for this person in this situation. The bag, the hustle, the drive the the motivation all of it is gonna come after you release your feelings walk away from this person and go cold on this situation because you pretty much know what's coming next for those of y'all who are like divine and high priestesses and you're intuitive and you're you're connected to source right you're a co-creator y'all bounce ideas off of each other you throw shit out there they answer you right you're not reaching and grasping for straws in the dark you get answers Right, I ask, I get hello. I say, Hey, y'all, I need to know. You get a nudge, you get answers. It's gonna show up on a show, right? You feel an urge to watch a show you ain't never fucking watched before in your life, and the answer for what your question is is in that show, right? You got to pay attention because the divine is always looking and listening, and they always guiding if you really about that shit, okay? All right, y'all, I'm finna go. This one was long. I hope it, it made sense and worked out for y'all and whatnot. <laughs> because some of y'all are special as fuck, okay? Some of y'all are, are really, 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 really blessed. Really, really highly favored. And you're really... Don't let the fact that there's so many other people doing something, right? Or there's people doing it like this. Or people giving these kind of messages. You don't have to worry about what nobody else is doing. Because they are not you. They do not have your path. They don't have your skill set. They don't have your your intuition, right? They don't have your connection to source that the same as you. They may not have no connection to source and just be doing some shit just to be doing some shit. Saying some shit just to be saying some shit. And just because they saying and doing it the way they saying and doing it, that don't mean the way that you would say and do it would not work for you. That don't mean you can't come out way after everybody in the game and be better than everybody right and be the top lickety split at whatever the fuck it is you feel what i'm saying so don't discourage yourself because somebody else is already doing it or they doing it this way or they saying this or you know they doing all these extra ass you know woo woo bullshit ass bullshit don't worry about that shit right do your shit the way you're supposed to do your shit and it's gonna work out for you all right because look hey okay. hey all right okay that's gonna be it give it a thumbs up like it if you like it subscribe if you like my vibe <laughs> my name is omni badu i love each and every one of you guys thank you for your likes your subscriptions your donations all of your positive comments if you want a person to read and jump down in the description box below and until next time love you guys bye